welcome in to an absolutely electric episode of the PHNX D-Max podcast right here on PHNX. This man next to me is just, the, Woo! Is, he is all of us right now. My name is Darren Montia. Of course, I am your mayor of PHNX. Uh, that's Jesse Friedman over there. He's the vice mayor of PHNX. This man in the middle, of course, Sean Paz, yo, the yo. man in charge of all of the electricity in the building right now. Uh, and of course, we thank you guys for coming on in for this post game episode. What a win by the Arizona Diamondbacks. Uh, a very unexpected outcome. When you look at the end results compared to where our emotions were after half an inning into this game, the Diamondbacks end up winning this one by a score of 15 to four. I don't know. Did they stop scoring runs? Is that right? (laughs) I mean, I stopped paying attention at 15 to four at least, Uh, but absolutely an incredible win. Christian Walker uh, put the Arizona Diamondbacks on his back in this game and carried them to a win. And I feel like in the process woke them up because There was a lot of contributions, including Cattell Marte hitting a solo home run, but Christian Walker, two dingers tonight, six RBI, just an incredible night from him, especially when the Arizona Diamondbacks needed it the most. He crosses the 100 RBI threshold for the first time in his career, Uh, and I mean, you couldn't ask for the offense to be on a better roll during a crucial week, more than more than this, a 15 to four victory. Yeah, I mean, the Diamondbacks trailed 4-1 to one in the second inning, and things didn't look good. Zach Davies was really struggling. Nope. The offense seemed to be maybe pressing a little bit, you know, swinging early in counts a lot again against Jose Urania. Six-pitch first inning. Yeah, six-pitch first inning. I mean, that, that wasn't the start that, that you wanted to get to if you're the Diamondbacks. But, you know, out in Atlanta, uh, I know we're going to talk about, you know, <laughs> later on what, what happened in that game. <laughs> But the Cubs had a six nothing lead and they lost seven to six. The Diamondbacks trailed four to one in the second inning and won fifteen to four. Just a, I, I mean, just an enormous day for the Diamondbacks in terms of their playoff hopes. This was, I believe, their biggest margin of victory for any game this season, winning this game by eleven runs. Good time for it. Just I mean, so unexpected, right? Yeah. I mean, in the in those first two innings, the offense just uh, you know, didn't didn't look fantastic. And Zach Davies, it you know, it it seemed like he was going to have a short outing, which he ultimately did. Uh, but the Diamondbacks bullpen came in and, and Ryan Nelson was phenomenal. And, you know, somehow we're talking about a 15 to four win. I didn't want to start off by talking about Zach Davies because Zach Davies <laughs> uh, was absolutely terrible for the Diamondbacks when they needed him the most. Honestly, uh, he was oddly utilizing a slider that Jesse pointed out he does not use. Uh, and when we say that, uh, the it's a pitch that he has literally only thrown 13 times this season prior to this start. There's threw also 15 a, times 15, in this game, 15 times in this yeah. game. He threw it more times in this game than he has all season is, is now the time to experiment. I mean, I guess I understand trying to go in with a game plan of, ta- you know, surprising, you know, the white Sox, right. Trying to maybe find out that they don't hit a slider. Well, so maybe you're trying to throw it. Maybe it's just a matter of changing up your game plan and what, they know from you know from from your tendencies so you're trying to catch them off guard but is now really the time to try a new pitch when when yeah. you were in the final week I of mean, the season I mean to be fair it wasn't uh I mean it it wasn't particularly bad I mean he got 5 whiffs on the pitch which is actually pretty impressive on 8 swings That's I wild. don't think the slider was was really his problem in this game at all but he didn't really have his changeup he didn't really have a feel for his changeup in a way that we've seen uh, kind of a lot this year. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Zach Davies has an ERA around seven and he's pitching in some pretty pivotal games for the Diamondbacks down the stretch. Uh, and he also, as I'm sure we're going to get into later, still lines up to pitch in game one. Don't even start. No, no. Uh, so that well, would be an interesting conversation. We could get into that right now because <laughs> he went three innings in this game, gave up eight hits, four earned runs, one walk, three strikeouts. Does Zach Davies start again for the Diamondbacks this season? I mean, I understand out of necessity, yeah. He kind of might have to, but does he have to? I, I don't know. And I I want first your knee-jerk reaction to that. Or do you let Zach Davies <laughs> pitch again at all? Oh, do you let him? Like, like is he? You think should he's, he? Yeah. No. Yeah. Will he? Most likely. Yeah. I just feel like this is how it's going to work. I mean, like. In the final game don't... of the year? Because that's what he's pretty much lined up for yeah, at this point, right? I, I mean, hopefully the final game of the year doesn't matter. Like, like if we're being honest, fingers like, crossed. If you look at the rest of the season, that has the highest likelihood of being a meaningless game, is the last one. 
Um, so that's all you can really hope for. Hopefully the you know the Astros do their job ish, or we do their the job, or someone does or their job. As long as the right people do the right, enough job. people do enough of their job, <laughs> then we will be okay. Do your job. Don't and, worry about other people's job. Just do your job. And Davies, nothing would be more beautiful than Davies going out in like a in a blaze of glory, seven innings, no runs in game one sixty two. Um, like, <laughs> let's do it. Jacob wants to know what the snake is whispering in your ear. Oh, it's what does he say? Oh, is that the D backs for a motherfucking wagon? Yeah, is what it's saying. That's all JJ's been saying all night long. Jesse, does Zach Davies pitch again for the Diamondbacks during the regular season this year? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, hard, hard to say. Be interesting to see what uh, Tori Lavello has to say after this game. I will say that you know, going back to what we were talking about with Ryan Nelson and how good he looked in this game. He and Zach Davies are sort of on on the same schedule now. Yeah, uh, I know that Ryan Nelson is being used out of the bullpen, so. You know, this isn't he's not necessarily used as a, in a starting role. And I don't think it's impossible. You could see him pitch at some point in the next several days. But, yeah, I mean, you maybe could target that where in that last game of the season, maybe Ryan Nelson gets gets a few of those innings. But it's tough because, you know, Ryan Nelson, for as great as he looked today, has not been that guy for for most of the season, uh, frankly. And so if that once if that game 162 does matter, the Diamondbacks are going to, I mean, they're going to have their back against the wall. They're going to be in a really tough position. So if you're them, you just sort of do everything you possibly can to avoid that scenario. I think it will be Justin Verlander on the mound for the Astros <laughs> in game 162, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> so you just don't want to be in that spot if you're the God, Diamondbacks gross. when it's Justin Verlander I don't like against, you know, who, whatever the Diamondbacks piece together in that game. We got a super chat. From our guy, uh, let's see where Peace we got. Uh, Peace of Yoshi, thank you so much for the super chat. Peace of Yoshi says, "Okay, but 16 and 15 run performances behind Davies. Yes, I mean you're not going to get that often. Like Jesse said, this is the biggest margin of victory for the Diamondbacks yeah. all season. We haven't. Runs. This this is actually something that's been so few and far between that I rarely remember being able to say like how cathartic it felt for the Diamondbacks mm -hmm. to just have a big." offensive output and really just kick a team's ass yeah even in some cases where they've put up a lot of runs it was still a fairly close game you know but uh this one felt really good like you said ryan nelson he was good he was really good was and ryan nelson great. is something that somebody that the diamondbacks absolutely can look at uh just everything is not is night four and two thirds inning one hit no runs two walks four k's uh it's just nice to have him doing that and hopefully he can stay locked in and the diamondbacks can look to him when they need him. Christian Walker, though, obviously um, had the big night, right? Mm -hmm. Christian Walker uh, hits his first home run in the first inning. It's his 32nd of the year. Too good for a cycle. Yep. Yeah, he's just he's too good for the cycle. He he had to hit another <laughs> home run instead of like a double or a single. Forget all that. Uh, he actually, uh, as Jesse pointed out, his offensive production was better than a cycle. So it's I more think you take for. mathematically, I think you'd take two homers and a triple over a single. Double, mathematically, triple, homer, sure, yeah. but from the vibes perspective, from the vibes you'd perspective, much rather yeah. your first baseman hit for the cycle. The vibes are crazy for for a cycle. But uh, in the fifth inning, he ripped a three run triple that really broke the game open. I mean, Christian Walker was just a, such a big source of uh, the offense tonight. Not only that, but he also, you know, I felt like he got things kick-started for the rest of the team. It felt like guys really kind of yeah. got locked in after that. They were able to relax. Like Jesse said, it felt like they were fairly tense early on. Like, you know, of course, it was, it was a big game, and they felt the pressure. We know that sometimes they've stepped up in those games, but we have often see them, you know, kind of struggle as a team offensively when they're in one of those, you know, big, big, games against a big opponent and uh this was just huge christian walker surpasses 100 rbi for the first time in his career uh he added another home run in the sixth inning that made the score 11 to 4 uh and then he also recorded the last out of the game just for fun just for you know just why not, why not? because he should and for all of those reasons christian walker is our king snake uh christian walker again three for five two home runs six rbi bang bang uh big night for christian walker and uh i i just think back uh, about your comments not too long ago sean where you were talking about how the team was you know kind of doing well without christian walker mm. really being a big productive part and should he wake up should he join in the team becomes the, at least the offense becomes scary right and i yeah. mean that's that's what you saw tonight that's what you saw tonight yeah i mean christian walker is like he's like 
the the guy that has the capability of doing the most damage with a single swing of the bat. Like that's not I don't think a hot take by any means. Like when he is on, it gives the offense like a little bit the offense just feels more dangerous. Yeah. Um and like obviously, you know, like Cattell, Corbin, like are all great players, but it just there's something about Christian Walker where it's just like when he's on, there's a little bit of fear if you're the other team. Yeah. Um and you felt that again tonight because he was all over the place. Well, the Diamondbacks, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we've talked about how they've struggled with runners in scoring position. We've talked about how at times they're able to get runners on base, but just not get that big hit. Christian Walker has struggled in that regard this year. He honestly. absolutely yeah. has. And if he can get back on track when it comes to that, this team's offense looks much different, you know, especially with the way some of the guys are hitting. Cattell Marte, obviously still, uh, like I said, he had that solo home run tonight, contributed as well. I mean, just felt like everybody at one point was kind of hitting for this team and everything was going their way, even though early on it did not, not look to be the case. But yeah, here we go. We're, we're wagon again. We're going back up the mountain. Damon, let's go back up the mountain. Shall we? <laughs> there he is. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> I thought that was originally for when you were fighting to be 500. It was Mount 500, yeah. Okay. But now we've just summited Mount 500. Now we're just uh, <laughs> more games over. That's all. Don't question the graph. Like, what are you even doing I here? Just, Come on. Uh, JJ, I was just more, more making the point. Look how far we've come. <laughs> we, used to be, we used to be, we used to be celebrating. Yeah. Hitting, making, being 500. Just getting to the top of 500. <laughs> and now they are. Now it's a guarantee. Now it is a guarantee yes, is. for this season. But uh, we thank you guys, of course, for being here in the PHNX Sports YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure to do so. Uh, leave us a little thumbs up. We always appreciate that. Uh, drop a like, as our man Gabby Marino says. Uh, also, make sure to sign up for notifications. That way you don't miss when any of our shows go live. If you're listening on the audio podcasting side, make sure to subscribe Subscribe there as well. Leave us a review. We always appreciate that feedback. Of course, I am drinking a victory beer tonight. Uh, this is a Joy Bus Wow Wheat. Like I've said, it doesn't matter. Wins, losses, this beer makes me happy. And all Four Peaks beers kind of make me happy. So make sure to find your favorite one. You can follow them on social media at Four Peaks Brew or at Four Peaks Pub. Uh, and of course, you can also check out Pumpkin Porter, which is now available on store shelves and back in draft lines throughout the valley. Uh, it tastes like a pumpkin pie. That's what well, it tastes and like. And more importantly, get to the A3 pub and get the Pumpkin Porter cheesecake. Mm -hmm. That will change your life. That sounds amazing. It is incredible. It will change your life. And their um, chicken French onion. Well, that, but the French onion soup. Oh, yeah, that's seasonal and it's amazing. Uh, I and I still miss their chicken. It's tenders. bread, cheese, and onions. What more? Could I don't you want? think any of us have eaten dinner. This just seems like we are, this, this is a terrible conversation. Like really we're going to move on. <laughs> we're going to push through, uh, and we're going to tell you to visit fourpeaks.com slash locator to find all your favorite brewery tours and events. Stein holding, which I thought I'd be good at, but I'm having second thoughts about that now. Oktoberfest, and of course, the haunted brewery tours, where you get to find out. Spoiler alert, the ghosts make the beer. Those are all right around the corner. Check out at Four Peaks Brew at Four Peaks Pub again to keep up with the latest at Arizona's hometown brewery. Was, must be 21 or older to drink Four Peaks and please drink responsibly. If the ghosts actually did make the beer, how much do you think the beer would cost? Because that would be well, pretty less valuable. because it's ghosts less. don't need money. So yeah, you don't have to pay them. So it's ghost, free labor. Ghost labor is the it's, cheapest but labor if out you, there. If you if sure. you are <laughs> if you are head of Four Peaks marketing and you have ghost made beer. You're a fool if you're selling. Well, it yeah, at I mean, cost. yeah, I like, mean, yeah, that's I don't, gotta I don't be. feel like they. <laughs> I don't feel like they go with that angle enough. They need to tell everybody about the ghost. Like and how they had like in a this room is the, the, beer in the, back. the the hazy ghost IPA. Yeah, and it's like it was made by you're the right. ghost of the four people. I would, I would call, pay. I wouldn't even call ungodly four peaks. amounts of money for that beer. It would be Ghost Peaks or something ghost like peaks. that. That's what it would be. It would be something <laughs> like that. But I don't know. The ghost um, of four peaks. What I do know, of course, as we watch tonight, boys, is that things are heating up in the ball park and of course it's a fun time right now to get down on the DraftKings Sportsbook app because every team is playing to the finish uh, and of course there's a lot of fun to be bet on as, as we're going to talk about a lot of craziness to be had uh, you won't miss a moment of the baseball action new customers can score $150 instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on baseball plus all customers can take a crack at a sweet payday with DraftKings same game parlays you know me I'm a big I'm a big SGP guy. I'm a big same game parlay guy. String together multiple bets from a single game for your shot at a major payout. What are you waiting for? Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code PHNX. New customers can score that $150 instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on baseball only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code PHNX. The crown 
is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. Licensee, excuse me, licensing partner, uh, Golden Nugget, Lake Charles, Louisiana. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.org co slash baseball for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources bonus bets expire seven days after issuance eligibility and deposit restrictions apply jj jesse uh, jr did a did a really great job with that uh, disclaimer yeah, that was really in his throat there at one point but otherwise it <laughs> yeah it's not, it's not great uh what do we got for the out of town scoreboard We're because of course for not bringing up the the Cubs situation. It yeah. is absolutely time to discuss that exact situation that you guys want to discuss. Uh, here is the out of town scoreboard. The Cincinnati Reds beat the Cleveland Guardians hey, um, 11 to 7. Ellie De La Cruz hit a home run 119 miles per hour, 400, 470 or 67 feet. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that was a rocket. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, Miami and New York got rained out. So that game will be made up tomorrow as a doubleheader. But this game in the middle that we're showing right now, absolutely electric. Uh, the Chicago Cubs lose to the Atlanta Braves by a score of six to seven. And my God, uh, what what an outcome that was considering, like Jesse said earlier, at what at one point during this night, the Cubs were up by a lot and the Diamondbacks <laughs> We're, it was looking bleak. We were down not, four to yeah. one. Cubs were what up six to six to nothing. Six to nothing. Yeah, yep. I think in the middle of the sixth it inning, the Cubs the were up six. It was the worst possible out. day for business. Yeah, and then it wasn't. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was bad, and then it was good for us. But we should uh, also probably touch on how exactly the Cubs lost. Bro, this that's game. how I was. Have yeah. We, oh, we, we're getting we there. We're going to yet? get there. But uh, yeah, it's a devastating loss because of how they lost. Right. Uh, it was first. It was uh, five unanswered runs. Uh, and then the Braves basically had a situation, I believe, with two on and two out uh, and a fly ball to say a Suzuki in the outfield that looked like it was the third out that would end the inning uh, was dropped and uh, Not even two score. Roth, it was completely mad. <laughs> he, like, he, he just, just whiffed, whiffed, whiffed he just lost it, right? Uh, and that involved the two Braves players scoring and the Braves taking the lead for good uh, and the Cubs losing that one. In fairly uh, maddening fashion, I imagine for Cubs fans right now. But you guys think uh, did Steve Bartman like Somebody, yeah, he, like he, a Steve Bartman ghost like yeah. block say Suzuki's view of that ball or perhaps, something? I, I perhaps, yeah. it, perhaps, it, it was like, the goat. Yeah. Maybe the goat. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like Suzuki was. I don't know if he was maybe fiddling with his contacts or something yeah. after afterward. Yeah. Maybe that's what happened. We'll have to see what the explanation is after the fact. But yeah, point being, I mean that play. Obviously, you know, the Cubs let the Braves get back into this game. The Cubs let the Braves score five unanswered runs in order to turn it into a game again. So it wasn't all because of this play. But yeah, I mean, theoretically, they're up 6-5. And then this play makes it 7-6 Atlanta. And that was the final score. And if the Chicago Cubs ultimately don't make the postseason, you know, by a game, you know everyone's going to go back and look at this game and look at this one fly ball that for whatever reason, say a Suzuki just lost it in the lights or something and, and wasn't able to make the play. Oddly enough, the Miami Marlins still have a worse record than the Cubs, but you were saying that uh, the Marlins playoff chances now are actually better than the Cubs. Yeah, I think it's because that's according to fan graphs as of a few minutes ago. Uh, I think it's because the Marlins' path to catch the Diamondbacks is a little bit clearer at this point because the Cubs are now two full games behind the Diamondbacks in terms of like what they would actually have to do to overtake them since Arizona you know, has that tiebreaker. So, uh, yeah, it is a little weird for the moment, though. The, according to fan graphs, the Marlins have a better chance of making the postseason, even though if the season ended right now, the Marlins would not be in and the Chicago Cubs would be in. So it's wild. It's go figure. Wild. Wild. Uh, Jacob Schultz, by the way, he's absolutely right. Uh, he's, this is a reference to our question from Mailbag <laughs> Monday. He said Davies gets voted out of the Big Brother house first. That is correct. That is how we would uh, handle that situation as of now. Elise also with a very good comment in regards to this Cubs loss. She says that loss is an all on say a pitching staff should be able to hold a six to nothing lead. And yeah, yeah, for sure. Not it, did, all on it, him. it did. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, he also had a chance to come up uh, in the in the ninth inning and, and perhaps redeem himself. Yeah, and he, he struck, struck out. out. Uh, but again, it's not 
one play that makes that loss. It's like, you know, yeah. before that, it was five. I mean, but it ended up being seven unanswered runs same, scored by the Braves. Like, I get, I like, but he's going to be, uh, he's going to be the scapegoat. This sentiment that, that is like in sports is such bullshit to me where it's like, Ah, uh, it's not one play. You should have done mm. your job. But like, no, that's a routine fly ball. Correct. They did yeah. do their jobs. Yeah. They did enough to win this game. Yeah. But Seiya Suzuki was incapable of, of, of fielding a routine ground ball. Now, mm. I don't want to. I don't want to like crucify him if he was dealing with a contact or whatever. Then it's not necessarily his fault. But like, it is. Like that play is why they lost the game. They win the baseball game if that play does not happen. Yep. I so, mean, they'd still have to. They'd well, still true. Have to, I guess to come back in the bottom of the ninth, right? For sure, it wouldn't but, have necessarily been over. But yes, I agree with you. We probably do overplay that a little bit yeah. too much in sports. Like, it's just oh, like, that one disastrous thing that happened. Like, what about everything yeah. that came before it? We, yeah, eh, we, we've it done that with the Diamondbacks this year before too, right? Yeah. And we've the said only, that especially it, about it, comeback but losses. If a quarterback throws an interception, like in the red zone, trying to win a game, everyone's like, ah, the quarterback lost the game. It's like, why doesn't that apply everywhere? Eh, it's fair, but we're not going to do that now. We're just going to say, like, hey, it's the Cubs as a whole. They all lost it. Yeah, I mean, um, and, that. like, that doesn't – we. Like, I hate to be heartless, but we don't care around these parts because we're happy they lost. Uh, and and, and I'm not, I'm not uh, throwing this out at the CHGO Cubs podcast at all, but I will say we are going to look at those all-city standings here in a minute. Before we do that, though, let's take a look at the wild card standings because, of course, this has been impacted. Uh, is this new? This doesn't look updated. Is this right? Yeah, I think this is right. Uh, oh, okay. why would this yeah. not be what, updated? You? Nothing, nothing. I apologize. I just thought. Uh, Thank you. I, I I think I deserve that apology. <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. I, well, I the game's good. back. Why are they equal? Why are the D backs and Cubs? Oh, that's that's oh, a, that's, that's a, a mistake. Uh, that's a fair point. Am yeah. I okay? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I yeah, feel like you now. Yeah. You okay. owe, I feel like you now owe Derek an apology. I, Derek, I apologize. Okay. To you. <laughs> yeah, you apologize to the entire D backs fan base. That's what I want you to do, you son of a bitch. Uh, but yes, the Diamondbacks have a one game lead here on the goddamn Cubs, and I wanted to see that in there. I was excited to see that, oh. and you robbed me of that joy. You son of a bitch. But here we that are. That might be my favorite, like, Derek Damon <laughs> like, during the show. <laughs> All right. Oh. Well, the Diamondbacks are 83 and 74. And, of course, uh, I mean, it's it's it really is a substantial, you know, uh, current lead, even though we can't see what it is because Damon refused <laughs> to update the graphic properly. Yeah, yeah. yeah how many games it. behind are the Diamondbacks? Or how many games behind the Diamondbacks are the Cubs? I don't know if we'll ever figure it out. Never be able to look that information up. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> I will I will say this, though. Uh, this night started hey, out in a way. Game there up. There it is. Game up. I don't think that Marlins thing is right either down there, but we won't yeah, even acknowledge that. Yeah, now it doesn't that. make any sense <laughs> at all. That made it, that made it worse. <laughs> Why? I'm not going to lie. worse. <laughs> oh, man. We need a, we need anyway. a plus one yeah. next to the diamond no, back. Yeah, yeah, I did make it worse. worse. There's, nothing, there's nothing worse than thinking you're, 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 you're fixing a problem and you yeah. just made it worse. No, I, I lost this round, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> do, do we have at least the all-city standings? Is Damon that at least zero, Derek one. Can I get that <laughs> up there? All right. Let's go, baby! Oh, the Phillies clinched yeah. today, didn't they? Yeah, yeah they, they yeah, not they only clinched. have clinched, but I believe they, they are now clinched. guaranteed to host uh, a you know in the wild card round. Correct. So they they are cemented yeah, they now over, into that so. into that top wild they have card clinched spot. Clinched the all city all city division. I, I think in general, it you know it it was already a pretty distant chance for them to yeah. come anywhere close to that, yeah, right? Yeah, but at but. the same time, uh, it's it's really the distance between them and and the marlins and all i care about right now at this point the reds winning that's not great either we do need a trophy oh, that for we this can division. send back and forth i mean not that we have we would not have had it yet uh there that, although i will say if there was a trophy on the line for all city i philly could get their ass straight up out of here yeah because it's different when we're playing for pride and all that but if there's hardware on the there's bullshit. You, we How spent are all, you going to impact all this season. team's winning record? But oh. we spent all season thinking we're ending up with a trophy, and then Philly <laughs> shows up and they snag oh. it from us? Fuck yeah. them. No, no we would shot. Be, we would be doing just what their record is since they came on. Yeah, which not I don't a shot, know which honestly might be better. better but but ever since I gave that pep talk, they haven't lost a game. Oh, uh, okay. Well, <laughs> then forget that, that pep talk. That didn't work. Uh, we just won't, we won't acknowledge that pep talk. But if, if the Diamondbacks were to beat the Phillies in, in the wild card True. round, hypothetically, would that? I like think that's got to take it back. Yeah, it's kind of like Ooh. it's it's got to be like the, it's like a it's like a territorial cup. It's a rivalry. It's just like every time we play each other. Anytime you play, yeah, you you the the trophy is up for grabs. Yeah. So if, if ASU and U of A meet each other in the college football playoff, 
later this year because that's definitely happening. Um, it's going to be for the territorial. Cup. <laughs> well, we do have some fun facts in regards to the playoffs and 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 the oh, yeah. pitch clock as well. But this is the first time in thirty years that the MLB playoffs will not include the St. Louis Cardinals, the New York Yankees, or the Boston Red Sox. Imagine that. Let's, Let's go. Make some noise. Let's I know go. some of you are sitting there, Sean. I thought you liked the Red Sox. Yeah, maybe. But I hate the Yankees more. Yeah. And so I will take the Red Sox never making the playoffs ever again. If it means the Yankees never make the playoffs ever again. Listen to um, that sacrifice he's willing to make. <laughs> yeah, for guy. you guys. Yeah, I for appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, baseball is more fun when more teams get to be a part of the postseason and when it's more teams yeah. that haven't been a part of the postseason yeah. in the I past. I mean, I will say, though, like, though those three teams haven't been in the doing it haven't done anything in the postseason in a minute like if anything now it is the astros braves and dodgers that are those sure. teams that show up every year that's sure. fair and the it usual would, suspects it honestly would there, probably right be now. better for baseball if those three teams were in the playoffs um but yeah but, i'm not complaining about it because i hate the yankees and also uh the cardinals are just boring eh, yeah. i'm tired of them i just want the diamondbacks in the yeah, playoffs that's, that's all so someone has to go <laughs> someone has to go but that's only because the goddamn diamondbacks are a wagon I'm and a we wagon. have a shirt that proves it look at this yeah. shirt look at this shirt look at this beautiful serpientes uh font wagon shirt yeah. it is it is specifically uh color coordinated for Sean's closet, yes, all of the clothes he owns <laughs> are all a shade of beige. Tone, yes. uh, and As I so, wear a green shirt, yeah, I know this uh, is one of the. Well, that's because we days planned it. I don't know if anyone noticed, but we are all wearing shades of green. We are. Uh, we're, we're 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 color coordinated today. These playoffs, we're wearing shades of gold. I love this shirt. Our guy Eric knocked it out of the park with this one, and this one feels special because the wagon thing is very special to us right here on this podcast. Uh, and I mean, what a year! What a year this has been to watch this team. And you know what? It's not over yet. The Diamondbacks have some more games ahead of them that they still need to win. And then maybe the playoffs. So we'll see. Uh, but things uh, they're they're a little bit closer right now. They got their some playoff room. odds have reached a new season high. They're at eighty nine point one percent. Wow, or whatever yeah, that's worth, not. whatever stock you it's put in. It's meaningless to me because I play fantasy football numbers. and I know that those numbers could switch yeah, really fast. Yeah, you know. yeah. At least Jesse knows that from a, from personal experience. We don't need to talk about that. I'm anymore. just going <laughs> to keep bringing it up as often as I possibly can. Uh, but I will say thank you to all of you that are a diehard member already. But if you're not a diehard member, guess what? You can join. Join us and you can get that very brand new shirt uh, as part of your Die Hard package right now. You will get a free shirt of your choosing from the phnxlocker.com. You also get 20% off all future purchases. You get access to our members only Discord lounge. You get all of the content around here. You giving them a drink? I was, that was wild for a <laughs> no, he was helping me. Oh, okay. Uh, you also have uh, <laughs> partner discounts. You have a $50 gift certificate for Mountain Mike's. You get the Dobson Ranch Ranch card. You get so many benefits, uh, including. Uh, exclusive discounts uh, from our partners and exclusive invites to events and even exclusive member merchandise. So join us and become a diehard member today by going to gophnx.com. Uh, and you can also check out Jesse's brand new article, which we will talk about here shortly again. But a great way to read Jesse's work is by taking some OG's gummies and then just sinking in to the numbers, <laughs> just diving in to all of the things that Jesse it's has done. Nothing like getting high and looking into numbers. <laughs> looking into stats. Let's go. Honestly, uh, I, I joke. But there, like, I can I get high that. and just get lost in <laughs> I mean, whatever world I'm in. Like, I can get lost in the world of Jesse articles. It's absolutely true. It, it might be the base. only that, way to get lost in the world of Jesse maybe, articles. They're, they're magical. Wait, hold on. I'm going to defend you for yeah, a minute you because so your articles uh, are an incredible combination of not just your your written words, but you bring not only a lot of like graphics you bring our tweets into it you bring a lot of stuff to that and it's very it's a very thorough entertaining experience but it is made better by og's gummies <laughs> and of course if you're stuck on what kind of gummies to get og's took the guesswork out of it for you the fruits the creams they have the mixed bags now where you can get mixed flavors just like some of your favorite candies uh but of course these are all of those Hall of Fame flavors in one place. Uh, the fruits and creams are available in both a sunny sativa or a mellow indica blend, allowing you to customize your OG's experience for a win, loss, mood of day. It doesn't matter whether you're reading articles, whether you're not. Uh, check out our friends at OG's Brands for yourself and try one or a few of their many delicious flavors. Check them out across all socials at OG's Brands and online at ogsbrands.com to find them at a local dispensary near you. You must be 21 or over to enjoy responsibly. Uh, again, 
Jesse had this brand new article that he just put up in regards. Or no, it's not the article, but your newsletter. In fact, uh, it is a newsletter. newsletter. Yeah, for our newsletter, maybe. sign up for the newsletter, and you could get wonderful content like this. Uh, Jesse discussed in the newsletter if Alec Thomas could potentially win the Gold Glove Award for center field. Uh, we've discussed it quite a bit, and his defense has been incredible, not just at Chase Field, but that that grab that he stole a home run away from uh, Aaron Judge in New York. Uh, he's just been all over the place. So, uh, what 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 are his chances here, Jesse? What what do you you want to give away some information from the newsletter a little bit? Yeah, I will. Um, because <laughs> I, the way that the newsletter works, just so everyone is clear, uh, previously we had newsletters which were diehard only pieces that right. were also posted on our website. Uh, so if you didn't read the email or whatever, you could still find it on our website. This newsletter, which is completely free, uh, all of our writers here at PHNX do it. We all have a day of the week. You can sign up for whichever newsletters you're interested in receiving from whichever teams you're interested in following. Uh, this newsletter, if you don't get it when it sends out, you you don't get it. It's not on the website. This is exclusive content just for people who subscribe. So go to our website and make sure you're subscribed if you have not already. Uh, but yes, I will go ahead and, and spoil some of what's in here. <laughs> Please uh, do. There's this guy on the Colorado Rockies whose name oh. you may or may not have heard. His name is Brenton Doyle. Who? And that- and, uh, of and his. Brenton Doyle is absolutely shoving in center field uh, this That's year, patrolling true. obviously a pretty challenging center field to maneuver. You out remember, of field. He, he, he threw a ball with the, at the takeover game we were at, like to the concourse unnecessarily because uh, he just needed to show off. How strong his yeah, arm was. His his arm, and and I think that's maybe what separates him from a lot of the other really good center fielders uh, in in the National League and is that he has he has an incredible incredible arm. Uh, and Alec Thomas doesn't have a doesn't have a terrible arm by no. by any means. Uh, better than I think maybe even some other uh, D backs outfielders, but it's not what Brenton Doyle's arm is. Brenton Doyle has an insane arm. Some of his throws have been clocked at well over 100 miles per hour, which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and so because of that, uh, if you look at the numbers, Brenton Doyle has 17 defensive runs saved and 15 outs above average. Alec Thomas has seven defensive runs saved and six mm. outs above average. It's a hard so case. There's, a, there's a really big difference there. So, yeah, I mean, defensive metrics aren't aren't everything. And is, as I wrote in the newsletter, yeah, this is, there, comes, is there any case that the offensive numbers come into play? Or the yeah, success well, of the team <laughs> yeah i i would hope that offensive numbers wouldn't come into play <laughs> for a defensive award right but the reality is that they historically have made a difference oh. uh, there was an interesting piece on fan graphs uh, last year talking about this and how there is considerable evidence that if you do not hit uh you're you're sort of at a disadvantage when it comes to True. The gold glove race. This uh, is a manager voted on award. Yeah, right? it is. It is seventy five percent voting from managers and coaches in in the same league. So yeah, and that's why the defensive metrics aren't the end all be all because this isn't this isn't a bunch of you know BBWA people uh, right. plugging it into their spreadsheets like someone like me might do. <laughs> uh, this is this is you know actual major league managers and coaches going off of. The numbers, but also you know what they've seen in some of these games, and yeah, on on the offensive uh, to your your question about you know whether offensive production would be a factor here, if it is at all a factor, it would very much work against Brenton Doyle. He has a <laughs> forty WRC plus this season, a hundred is league average for those who don't know, uh, and among position players with four hundred or more plate appearances, that is dead last in all of baseball, and the next lowest is sixty one. So he is way lower than everyone else at 40. Should it make a difference? Absolutely not. I think Brenton Doyle uh, is is the best candidate for this award. But Alec Thomas, those numbers that I gave, he is pretty clearly in second in, in the National League. So if it doesn't go to Brenton Doyle for whatever reason, uh, Alec Thomas, in, in my view, would be the next most logical candidate there. Uh, I I do want to turn this into a Christian Walker appreciation podcast. So he's good. Uh, in in regards to his Golden Glove chances and or Gold Glove chances and the fact that he has had yeah. an awesome year. I mean, uh, he still leads the National League in total defensive runs saved with nine. It's not quite the year he had last year, but he's still considered to be the best defensive first baseman. I feel like in the National League and one of the best in in all of baseball. Yeah, he's really good at first base, and and the man can hit too, right? I yes, mean, he can. After today, thirty-two home runs, one hundred and three RBI. 
the Diamondbacks traded their their franchise first baseman, obviously entering the, the 2019 season. It was one of the most unpopular trades in franchise history. And I think it continues to be to this day. No, no one is no one is happy fair. that the Diamondbacks traded Paul That's Goldschmidt. Although Paul Goldschmidt has 76 RBI this year so far. Just saying. Yeah, Just saying. I mean, like I mean, he may or may not have he won might a very have, important award last year. He might have won a significant award last year. And and <laughs> like I'm the, not that we're not gonna focused acknowledge in the past. Right now, I'm <laughs> focused in the present. Why are you My bringing first a bullshit? baseman is a better hitter and a better defender. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Christian Walker, I, I don't think you necessarily have to play the like, oh, was he as good as has he been as good as Paul Goldschmidt since 2019? Uh, and the answer to that's no. <laughs> yeah, the answer to that is probably no. But has Christian Walker been a, a top 10, maybe even top five first baseman in baseball in that span, especially over the last couple of years? Absolutely. Walker, what he Walker, gives you defensively, Walker, Walker, you know, what he's given you offensively these past Walker, couple seasons, he is years, he Christian is incredibly Walker, impressive out there at, at first base and, and at the plate. He's and also, <laughs> it's not like he's playing at a time where there are a bunch of bums at first base. Like Freddie yeah. Freeman is going to end up maybe finishing in the top three of MVP votes this year. Obviously, Goldsmith did last year. So, like, to say he's a top five first baseman when there are very good first baseman playing right now. I see Walk. Derek, what what are you? I'm what just. Are you they, well, they wanted me to sing the song, so I just did well, it softly it, just into the mic, mic while we did that. Uh, Christian Walker. We haven't talked enough about the fact that his middle name is Dixon. Yeah, we really Christian haven't. Christian Dixon Walker. Big Christian Dixon Walker. Uh, Christian Walker, per our friend Jack Summers over at Sports Illustrated, uh, has raised his OPS from 833 to 852, and his WRC plus from 121 to 125 in a single game. Uh, and and as he says, do you have any idea how hard that is to do in game 157 after 644 yeah. plate appearances? Numbers are kind of stuck at this point. Yeah, it's, it's really kind of crazy to do that, right? <laughs> so what a big night for Christian Walker. Uh, by the way, in a game where 19 runs were scored, the time of game was two hours and 55 minutes. God bless the pitch clock. I told you we have fun stats for you, oh, by the way. Uh, there facts. have only been nine oh. nine inning games of three hours and 30 minutes or longer this season uh, compared to the most ever in 2021 when there was 309. Jesus Christ. 309 nine inning games that went over three hours and 30 minutes. Last season, 231 games that were nine innings went over three hours and 30 minutes. It doesn't take into account extra inning games but of course you can all thank the pitch clock you can all thank the pitch is, clock every one of you can all thank the goddamn like who, pitch clock is there anyone still complaining no nobody but because like there, there were so many people yeah. being like ah oh, you're gonna ruin the game there, and they were just wrong we have one guy that shows up in our chat every once in a while that still doesn't like any of the new rules you're at wrong. all and you're wrong i mean you're wrong <laughs> i don't know how you could argue that it's better you could also not argue that it's not a new rule yeah. Because uh, according to <laughs> another fact, fun fact I have for you, book. Yeah, you can all thank the pitch clock, which technically has been around since February 27th, 1901. Good job, umpires, not enforcing a rule that's been around since 1901. Uh, that's a real fact, by the way, from baseball and the law on Twitter. They've been discussing it uh, ever since the pitch clock was implemented, that this is not a new rule. Uh, and there is an article that they posted, by the way, uh, on the date that that happens from February 27, 1901. And in the article, it states the change that is happening is that the pitcher must deliver the ball to the batsman within 20 seconds after the latter takes his position at the plate. We should have been doing this the whole time. We could have been doing this the whole time. That's actually kind of a long time, though. Yeah. Like after the batter. So like the hitter gets set. Yeah. And then you have 20, 20 seconds, seconds after to throw that. it. That's I don't know how often guys, time. how many I bet guys you before the pitch clock it was implemented, they were taking way longer than that, though. <laughs> I bet you they were. I mean, that's but that's kind of the opposite of the narrative, right? Like yeah. games used to move way faster back in the day, not they did. slower. So they did. I mean, I'm guessing they just eventually realized that that wasn't really worth enforcing because it i mean 20 seconds when once the batter is set to, it was probably something that they were enforcing but they never had to enforce were they counting on their hands too it. were they like one yeah, like, two yeah. one, three, did they have their <laughs> two motherfucking two time did they have, have electricity pitch clock <laughs> oh my god all right well i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know, they did jesse damn it why are you making me feel stupid but anyway i do think it's uh, funny i have to reveal at one point derek 
uh, on our show rundown ac- accidentally had that the pitch clock has been around since 1091 <laughs> rather than 1901. And I believed it for a second. I was like, yes, for over the pitch a clock not only the pitch clock has not only been around for more than 100 years, yeah. the pitch clock predates the game of baseball. It predates no. time. It, no. yeah, Baseball's it, been around be for 15,000 years. I've told you guys that. You all know that. That's the truth. But man. Again, what a huge win this was tonight for the Diamondbacks. And, I mean, I can't say enough, again, about uh, how – like, because, again, this uh, – six games left. There's now five games left after this. This game literally felt like when they were down 4-1 to one, that this this was potentially their season. That's how each win and loss kind of feels. Yeah, and, you win and you're automatically making it to the playoffs or, or you lose. And, and you're and done. It. It's, it's over. Done. It's <laughs> over, in fact. But uh, the thing is, is that with with the teams being as close as they are, it does, it's, it's not as drastic as we were making it at one point when we were almost doing it. You know, we have fun around here. Sometimes we do it just for fun. The, the super drastic, super overreactionary thing. You guys know you've been here. Uh, but I will say that this definitely does feel like every win is critical and every loss does really change everything. Look what happened with the Cubs tonight. I, and, I, and like Jesse said, how that how that could impact the season. You're going to look back on that one loss yeah. and be like, man, we had that one six to nothing. I, I mean, that, I, that felt like a Diamondbacks thing. I genuinely can't remember like a time just as a baseball fan in a very long time where I have been like, like we had to throw on the end of that, that the end of that Braves game because yes. like everything everything matters. And then he switched everything over. We switched over and started watching Astros, Astros versus Mar- Mar- yeah. Mariners, Mar- yeah. Mariners because yeah. we need to know how the Astros are gonna like come every, into this every, final it all, series. It all matters. It yeah. all matters, and it's awesome. Like yeah. it is just so cool to be like engaged in the league in such in like in a way like this that like you can't. As much as it doesn't matter how much you love the baseball, like it's very hard to to be this invested in baseball in June. Um, but like, it, it would be a matters. little a little odd to be like yeah. living living like and dying I, with be the like, oh my god, every... let's go! The Braves just won the game in the bottom of the eighth. <laughs> it's June third. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! We are still seven games back. Uh, Mark Solera just got here, and Mark, you're tardy, by the way. Uh, we're gonna have to have a talk later. What do you mean? Is that TV Je- Oh, it is TV Jesse. No, this isn't TV Jesse. This no. is podcast Jesse. Oh, TV Jesse pod- wears a oh, suit. Oh, TV Jesse's a completely different yeah. guy. TV Jesse we got co-op. winter meetings Jesse. We have big giant head Jesse or big blurry head Jesse. Yeah. There's a yeah, lot right. of versions no, a lot of, of Jesse. Je- Jesse was big giant head Jesse when he came in this morning. Correct. Like oh, he was man. better than everybody else. <laughs> His could barely fit TV through this door. Morning. He was like, you guys all see me on it the news? It was unreal. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> Uh, Mark. Also, the reality was that Derek was out here acting like a proud dad, screaming it from the rooftops, being like, "Jesse was on TV." I really was. I really <laughs> was. Somebody in our Discord chat, uh, I think it was Giselle, said uh, it was a picture of I think uh, Kardashian mom with the with the camera. I was like, "Yep, that was me." I was so proud. But uh, Jesse did a great job. In fact. My wife texted that he did a great job. So wow. make sure if you haven't had a chance to check that out. That's the uh, highest praise. It really is. Yeah. She's a hard woman to please. I can tell you <laughs> uh, from personal experience. But definitely uh, Diamondbacks. Fun time. Fun time to be watching this team. And, of course, you have every re- reason to watch every moment of the final five games of this season. Uh, and maybe some other games, too, because it's all, all going to impact uh, if this team can make the playoffs. But a great place to watch those games is at Illegal Pete's. Of course, Patio season is here. We are dropping below 100 degrees. That means it's patio season. We were out there on the patio last Saturday. It's beautiful. It's It's beautiful outside. So uh, make sure to check out Illegal Pete's. They have the strongest margaritas in Arizona. They also have some incredible food. Uh, Bowls, tacos, salads, burritos, nachos, of course, the pipe and hot queso, guacamole, all of that stuff. Check out their custom cocktails and their beers at their full bar. And make sure to have yourself a great time watching baseball and eating some amazing uh, Illegal Pete's food. It is your go-to spot this summer. Stop by for happy hour, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. every day at all 12 locations. Uh, Illegal Pete's, the go-to spot for burritos, buddies, and beer for over 28 years. And we don't talk enough about the fact that their happy hour goes from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. We that doesn't even make sense. Take advantage That's of it That's such enough. a big That's range. Happy hours. Yeah. Like, usually it's 3 to 5, you know, 3 to 5.30 maybe. No. 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 3 to 8. It's literally during dinner time. Here yeah. The happy hour. It's an absolutely, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. Uh, speaking of vibes, a great way to improve your vibes in your home by buying yourself an amazing sign from Ellie, uh, from Saturday Neon. It's big LED neon signs for your favorite collegiate schools. They have 19 select schools now, uh, including the one that Damon will not shut up about. Uh, Colorado, 
If you're a big, if you're a brand new Colorado good fan, logo. get yourself the Colorado uh, logo. It's solid. I yep. like the good Buffalo. Uh, Alabama, Wisconsin, Auburn, and so many others. It's great for offices, man caves, dorm rooms, and so much more. They absolutely make a great gift this holiday season. And of course, whether you're a diehard fan or a casual supporter, you will love the way these signs light up uh, your space in your home. So make sure to go to SaturdayNeon.com and use code PHNX for 10% off your order today. Free shipping for orders over $200. You see what Mark said? What did Mark say? He's got a, uh, he's got a, a legit reason. What You're what coming from happy hour to legal peace? Oh well, okay then. Yeah, that's all is forgiven, Mark. That's yeah. that's a that's a reason. But did you bring us taquitos? I wish because I, I still haven't gotten. My I taquitos. wish I was at happy hour as well. The yeah, bomb right that now. might be something we need to go do right after this show. Have because you guys, we need to celebrate. Have you guys seen what what Mark and and company have done to me in the Discord? I have absolutely the seen Discord? the Barbie picture. Yeah, of you yeah. In yeah the they Barbie like, picture. They like turned him into Ken. I miss that. What happens because Jesse is Canuff. Feedbacks Discord. Yeah, I know that Jesse is Canuff. They enough. they take they find pictures of me like like shots of me on that you know, I give doing <laughs> yes the, yeah Derek generally provides the photos <laughs> and then they take them and they I don't know is it an app I don't honestly know what it I is I don't know what he does there's something just some sort of magic he made me some a card sort of magic with a version that of me happens on it. and it makes me look like yeah. Ken or Barbie I guess I, no. I, I think there were two different ones there was that one but then there was just GQ Jesse that had like the good hair like some product yeah, I in mean, your hair them like are a genuinely suit. a pretty good look that's, yeah. that's where i get my my fashion there was a lot of swooning and, you know. over jesse in the discord it was it was uh, it was odd it was off-putting our discord me... is so active yeah. it's impossible to find anything that's happened more than like five minutes ago yeah because, yeah that's, i'm sorry that's people that's, <laughs> well a game happens so good luck <laughs> yeah. good luck getting to the start of that conversation but uh of course we appreciate you guys for making our discord <laughs> like that you guys are the reason <laughs> why our discord bad. is hard to find stuff in because you make it an absolute vibe. blast to be in. Off. And we are wagon. Derek, so, did you record true. Jesse's segment on VHS? I did record Jesse's <laughs> segment on VHS. And I'm going to show him how that works at a later time. He still you doesn't can't believe do me. That. He still doesn't believe me that you can record <laughs> on the VHS tapes. It's the wildest <laughs> thing. Uh, but anyway, you can follow us all on Twitter uh, for more of this hijinks, I guess you it's, could say. Real quick, it's crazy that like VHS used to work where like, you would have lifelong memories. You would record a kid's like first steps or a wedding, and then someone would pop it into a, a, a VCR, Correct. record an episode of The Simpsons, and Correct. those memories are lost Correct. forever. Yeah, in favor of Bart Simpson. You know what's you know what's more awesome about that is popping in that tape, thinking it is the family memories, and seeing it start. I have a story for y'all. And then like go over. through the first ten seconds of like a birthday from when you were eight, and then it, and then immediately just <laughs> beep, 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 and then it's. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that yeah. thing. Yeah, I used to record South Park on my old VHS <laughs> tapes. That's what I used to do with them. But anyway, um, great VHS tape. It will teach you how to work VHS tapes. By the way, here at this podcast. But in the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter. I am at Cap underscore Caveman with a K. Sean is at Sean underscore to pause. Jesse is at Jesse and Friedman. The People's Producer Damon, where you can shame him, is on. That kind of rhymed uh, on Twitter at Damon. Can Dog, I just say D-A-W-G. I literally made and sent a new version <laughs> just because like I couldn't live with myself. Do you want to put it, it up? Still messed up. Do you want sh- it's still messed up. No, yeah. not anymore. Oh, do you want to put it? up? I sure hope not. Well, three times the nationally wild better. card race. Yeah, let's take a look at this. There's that's wrong. It's still wrong. No, I just <laughs> no. no. Yeah, it's better. I honestly I, I had no it. idea at any point that any of them mm. were wrong. So. Yeah. Shockingly, I think it's accurate. Yeah, this is correct. <laughs> Shockingly, <laughs> yeah. I think I did it, guys. I think you did it. Uh, it's Marlins, a big moment for you, Damon. Yeah, big, big, big redemption moment for you. Uh, Marlins have. Oh, Sean's right. Is that Sean uh, from the CHGO White Sox? Oh, I didn't know. He said missed the opportunity to call slowly. Yeah, you are the lowly White Sox. So the there Diamondbacks you go. have had like the, there's an enormous distinction that has developed between the Diamondbacks playing in Chicago and the Diamondbacks playing in New York. Yeah. Like the Diamondbacks yeah, finished the Chicago. they yeah. finished the season two and eight in New York, having lost that series with the Mets, and then or I guess two and eight against New York teams, right? Um, and then yeah, I mean obviously they you know six out of seven against the Cubs this year, and then you know having won the first game of the series. Can we so. throw the All City standings back up there for Sean real fast, just in case he was not present when we posted those? Uh, I know it's just. It's just it's just to see that the White Sox are 28 games back. That's all. I just needed to see that one more time. Thanks, Damon. I appreciate that. Uh, all right. Well, where were we at? I don't, you you were in the middle of saying Damon's. Yeah. 
Yeah, he is. Uh, we are David Dogs. <laughs> is that enough for you, stupid Max on the Rising Show, stealing our bit? Uh, he's at Damon Dog. That's D A W G. We are aggressively <laughs> Damon's dogs. Uh, <laughs> of course, our show is at PHNX underscore D backs, but all roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Do not miss out on that wagon shirt. It is incredible. So uh, pick up the brand new wagon shirt right now at the phnxlocker.com. Get yourself something nice for yourself. And get ready for the playoffs, for the playoffs yeah. baby. We are a wagon. So, again, we thank you guys so much for your time. Uh, and remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it is so much more fun when Christian Dixon Walker mashes. Oh, <laughs>